This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And I rejoice to be with y'all here this morning in God's house, doing the thing that God created us to do, and that is being in relationship with God, honoring God, worshiping God, and being in relationship with one another. Uh, before we continue on with our worship or get started with our worship, just a few announcements that I want to make. Actually, first, before we do that, I want to let y'all know that um, there are a couple of opportunities to get to know me. And who really, when you think about it, wouldn't want to get to know me? Um, <laughs> So there's a couple of opportunities. Uh, first, if you want to get together in kind of a group setting, you can get a hold of Tammy, and Tammy will hook you up. We're going to have at least a couple more uh, group meetings together, and I'd love to meet you in that context. Also, if you just as soon sit down and meet with me in person, uh, I could do that as well, and that's what this is for. So I'm not going to give this to Kirsten because she's, she already knows me <laughs> reasonably well. If you hadn't already signed up and you'd like to sign up, go ahead and, and uh, fill one of these out. I, I know y'all, so we'll, we'll start it back over here. You can, you can pass, it, pass it back to them. How about that? All right. So, um, so anyway, I would love to sit down and, and get to know everybody in this congregation. If you're interested at all in doing that, go ahead and sign up for one or the other of those opportunities. I uh, want to remind everybody that the Sunday school classes, you may have seen it when you came in, they're starting, most of them are starting up new studies, and so if you're not already plugged into one of those classes, please go ahead and, and, and plug yourself in. Uh, I guess uh, a, a, a new, uh, let me see, yeah, Kim is leading a new Monday morning Advent study as well, so you, uh, you could participate in that at 9.30 on Monday. Um, this coming Wednesday uh, is... Kind of a big deal. We've got the, a new members dinner. So anybody who's joining the congregation, has joined the congregation here recently, uh, they're going to be, we're going to be having dinner with them. And we would love if, uh, if as many folks from the congregation could make it as possible so that they could know that they are indeed welcome uh, and that we love having them here. And then right after that at six o'clock, is going to be the great day of sharing uh, opportunity where we can put together those Thanksgiving boxes for folks. I uh, also want to let everybody know that November 19th, the Heart and Hands Ministry is going to host a community Thanksgiving meal, and the sign-up sheets are out there in the atrium. The Salado Thanksgiving service, the community Thanksgiving service, is going to be, I guess, the next Sunday evening, November the 20th at 6 o'clock uh, at the Catholic Church. Uh, and uh, the Salado Family Relief Christmas Project. we got a lot going on. Goodness gracious. Uh, Salado Family Relief Christmas Project is, is in full swing, and so if you want to get plugged into that, talk with Kristen. And finally, last but not least, is the I-35 Thanksgiving meal. we got sign-ups out there, and so please, if you haven't already signed up, you want to participate, uh, from what I hear, it's kind of life-changing, and so you don't want to miss it. Uh, if, if you could now go to God with me in prayer. Loving God, all, almighty God, creator of everything that is, we come before you this morning uh, in thanksgiving, in praise. You've called us together as your people. Uh, you've called us your children to be in your presence and in the presence of one another to worship you, to glorify you, to give you thanksgiving. So we thank you this morning for calling us. We thank you for blessing us with life, with family, with this family of faith. We ask this morning that you bless us with your spirit, that you bring your spirit down upon these places, that you fill each one of us to overflowing with your spirit so that we may offer you that praise and offer you that thanksgiving that we have come here this morning to do. We ask this in the name of your son, our Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's good to see you all this morning. We're going to go ahead and get started with our worship and praise. Um, so I'd like to invite you to stand as you're able. We're going to sing um, the Lion and the Lamb together.
All right, so now we come to a time of prayer. Uh, God's invited us into this house. God's invited us into relationship. And one of the ways we express that relationship and live it out is through prayer, is through connecting directly with God through our words, through our thoughts. Um, we have in the bulletin, if you've got a bulletin, we've got a list of prayer concerns, and we would ask that you keep those people and those circumstances in your prayers for the rest of the week. But now we have an opportunity to go to God directly here, now, among ourselves. Uh, go to God in praise, God, go to God in, in worship. And so would you join me now in prayer and let us begin first with a moment of, of silent reflection and prayer. Loving and almighty God, you are indeed able. Through your breath, you brought creation into existence. Through simply speaking the word, you brought us into existence. You brought everything that is, everything that was, everything that will be into existence through your very being, through your love. Lord, all of creation, we came into existence as a result of your power, of your glory, of your love. And so we've come together this morning to express that praise and to express that thanksgiving, to express our, our appreciation for who you are, for your glory, for your power, for your majesty. Most of all, for your love. For the fact that you loved us into existence, that, that without you, we would not be. Without your love, we would not be. Without your love, we would be meaningless. There would be no point. So we celebrate this morning. We celebrate that love. We honor you for it. We thank you for it. We praise you for it. Yet we also recognize that all too often we fail to do so. We forget to do so. We, we forget that without you we are nothing. That without you we would not be here. And so we go on, carry on our lives as if you weren't there. Think we can do this ourselves. We can handle this ourselves. We don't need God. We, we get God on Sunday morning, but, but, but we're good. And so, God, this morning, as we gather together to honor you and worship you and praise you, we we ask for your help. We ask for you. We ask for your spirit to be present with us, not just in this moment. Not just for the next 30, 40 minutes. But for for the rest of this day, for the rest of this week, for the rest of this month, for the rest of our lives, Lord, we ask for your abiding presence within us. And not just that, because we've already got that. We ask that you remind us that you that you show us that you do whatever you can, whatever is necessary to get our attention, to let us know that you are there. You will never leave us. You will always be with us. Guiding us. If we'll just pay attention, leading us, if we'll just let you. So, Lord, help us to do that. Help us to pay attention. Help us to let you be in charge of us. Be the boss of us. Show us where to go. Show us who to go to. Lord, we ask all of this. In the name of the one you sent to save us, the name of the one who you sent to live as an expression of the perfect love that you are. The one who you sent to die 
not only as an expression of that love, as the ultimate expression of that love, but to enable us to participate in that love, to, co- to reconnect us to you. And through who his resurrection, we are assured that this new life that he came to make available to us isn't just something that we enjoy today, but we enjoy for all eternity in your presence. So Lord, we raise this prayer up to you in the name of the one you sent, using the words that he himself gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Let's see, we got some, we got some kids here today. Y'all want to y'all come up? I think we got a lesson for y'all. And I'm so sorry. It says Miss Christy in the bulletin, but she is out sick today. So instead, you've got Miss Kristen. Okay, you guys can sit on the ground. You guys can sit right there. Okay. Good morning. How are you guys? Good? Okay. I have a question. Put your hand on your head if you have ever had anything good happen to you. Something good. Okay. When you have something good happen to you, do you want to tell other people about it? Yes. Okay. It's not something we keep secret, right? Sometimes you do have to wait to tell people really good news, but you you want to tell people, right? Okay, so good news is something we want to tell people, though, at some point, right? So maybe you made a good grade on your spelling test, or maybe you are the person who kicked the winning soccer goal. When something good happens, we want to tell people, right? We just came back from um, Bible camp, and we had a friend with us, and she called her parents on the way home, and um, she was so excited. She told, every, she told them every single thing that happened at Bible camp in about a minute. <laughs> every detail. Like, she was going through. She was, it was such a wonderful time that she could not wait. And she told them everything as fast as she possibly could. Okay? She was so excited. Okay, have you had something good happen to you this week? Okay, think about it in your brain. Think about that good thing. Okay? When you go back to your seat, I want you to make sure that you tell the people that you're with the good thing. Even if they already know it, tell it to them again, okay? So, what does that have to do with our Bible story for today? Something good is happening. You are right. Okay, so, in the Bible story today, Jesus goes to Galilee, and he finds a man named Philip. And when Jesus met Philip, he said to Philip, follow me, okay? So not only did Philip get to meet Jesus, but Jesus asked him to follow him, and Philip became one of his disciples. So the very first thing that comes to Philip's mind is to tell someone what had happened to him. Do you think that that means that Philip thought it was good news? Something exciting? Yes. Okay, so he immediately went and found his friend named Nathaniel, and he told Nathaniel, we have found the person that Moses was talking about, the person that the prophets are talking about. And it's Jesus. And what do you think Philip said? Yay? Do you think, do you think he might have said, hey, I've met this Jesus person. Let me tell you about him. Yeah? Do you think, if you have something really, really good happen, not only do you want people to hear about it, but do you want them to, like, experience it for themselves? Like, Is it better if the people saw you kick the winning soccer goal? Yes. That's even better than telling people about it, right? Yeah, they might not believe you, right? So, Philip says, not only do you have to, am I going to tell you about Jesus, but I want you to come and see him. You got to see this for yourself. So, do you think Nathaniel went? 
Some of you say yes. Some of you say no. Okay. I'll, I bet you'll find out more about that during the sermon. I won't tell you. Okay. You could just read the Bible and find out for yourself. That is absolutely an accurate thing that you can do. Okay. When we, so do we know about Jesus? Yes. So if we're going to be like Philip, what should we do then? We should follow Jesus, but not only follow Jesus, should we tell people about Jesus? Yes. And show people about Jesus. We'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. Yes, but you can tell people about Jesus, right? You can tell people about your experiences with Jesus. You can tell people about coming to church and getting to know people who follow Jesus, right? So if you love Jesus and you love following Jesus, you should tell other people about him too. Okay, you want to pray with me? In a minute. Okay, let's pray. You repeat after me. Dear God, we are thankful for the happiness Jesus brings us. May we share it with our friends so they might know that Jesus brings happiness too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, you can grab one piece of candy. All right, could I ask the ushers to come down with the offering plates, please? So we have an opportunity now to worship God in a little bit different way than we have been so far. We have an opportunity to worship God with our gifts. Uh, God has given it all for us. God gave his son, his one and only son, so that through believing in him we may have eternal life. Uh, And as his children, we want to be like him. We want to give like he gave. Now, of course, we can't give exactly the same way, but we do have an opportunity here today to express through our offerings, our thanksgiving and our praise for the sacrifice that God has made for us. So now join me in prayer. Loving God, almighty God, we thank you again for the gift of life, for the gift of your son, for the gift of salvation. We ask that you accept these gifts that we offer to you now as expressions of our thanksgiving, as expressions of our praise. And we ask that you enable them to enable us to help build your king kingdom here on earth. And we ask this in the name of your son, our Lord Jesus. Amen.
Amen. I'd like to invite you to be seated as we come upon our scripture lesson for today. And our scripture lesson for today is from John's Gospel, first chapter, verses 35 through 51. The next day, John was again standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, there is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher. Where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are going to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said to him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered him, do you believe because I told you that you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened up and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. So now just imagine that you're Andrew, okay? You're following John the Baptist, who everyone acknowledges as the guy. Right? He's the first legitimate, real prophet in Judaism for like hundreds of years. He is a big deal. And you, as Andrew, you're kind of a big deal following him. You, you're pretty excited. You're imp- pretty enthusiastic about this thing. And, and so you're standing there with John one day, and John points over at this other guy, the prophet points over at this other guy and says, you think I'm a big deal? That guy is the Lamb of God. He's come to to cleanse the earth of its sins. I don't know, but if I was Andrew, I think I would have been pretty intrigued by that. And I think he was because he and his buddy who were standing with him, they immediately go and start following Jesus. But before they can even get started, Jesus turns around and asks them a question. He asks them, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? That's such an easy question, such a simple question, but it's such a deep question, right? What were Andrew and his buddy looking for? Maybe it was a fix. Maybe it was a fix to the religion of the day that they found themselves in. A religion that maybe they thought had gotten a little too beholden to power. Maybe had, had, had focused a little too much on form and discipline. Maybe it was the culture. 
Maybe it was affixed to the culture that they found themselves in, a culture that worshipped power and honor and status, that was, that was deep into division and anger and hatred. Or maybe it was just something in themselves. Maybe, maybe they felt that something was missing. Maybe they felt an absence. Maybe they were looking for purpose. Maybe they were looking for meaning. Maybe they were trying to understand who they were and what their place was in the world. And maybe that's why they started to follow Jesus. Maybe they thought that Jesus had what they were looking for. But it's pretty clear from the text here that they hadn't really completely thought through this, this idea of what exactly it was they were looking for. Because in response to Jesus' question, what are you looking for? They're like, they're like, yada, 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 yada. I mean, they didn't know. So they asked him, a question in return, right? They, did, they sort of turned it back on him, right? So like, where are you staying? Like, really, Andrew? Is that the best you can do? Dude, come on. Well, I mean, it, it's easy for me standing here 2,000 years later. I've had a, a more than a week to review this passage of Scripture. It's easy for me to get on Andrew and to, and to say, you know, yeah, the guy's an idiot. But the fact is, if I'm being honest with myself, if I'm being honest with y'all, I'm really not in much better shape. And I'm not sure any of us in this room is in much better shape. Every single one of us here is looking for something. We're looking for something. But we're not any better than those disciples at naming it, at understanding it. And in fact, I'd say that probably most of us here, most of the time, may not even realize that we're looking for something. We may just feel that emptiness. We may just feel that longing for something new, for something different. That It's got to be different than this. It's got to be better than this. But we're so busy. Maybe we're just scared. But whatever it is, we, we don't take the time. We don't identify that thing that we are looking for. And so we do pretty much whatever we can to avoid having to deal with it, right? So I shared with you all last week a little bit about the stuff that I did to avoid it. Some people avoid it with politics. For some people, it's drugs and alcohol, maybe after the politics, right? For some people, it's food. For some people, it's sex. For some people, it's job. For some people, it's money. For some people, it's just busyness for the sake of busyness. But whatever it is, deep down, we are looking for that same thing that those disciples were looking for. We are looking to fill that longing, to fill that emptiness. We are looking for meaning. We are looking for purpose. We're looking for the answer to why we're here. We're looking for the answer to who we are. And the thing is that Jesus knows that. I love Jesus. Y'all love Jesus? Can I get an amen? You love Jesus? Amen. Amen. I love Jesus. And it's not just because he's the second person of the Holy Trinity, fully human, fully divine, through whom all existence came into creation, who maintains existence by his existence, who lived, died, and was resurrected for the, for the forgiveness of my sins and for my salvation so that I may, I may live in, in eternity with God and God's love. That's all good. That's good stuff. I really love Jesus because he's so smart. 
I mean, he knew. Those disciples didn't know what they were looking for, but he knew. And so he says to them, in response to their non-response, come and see. What are you looking for? You don't know? Come and see. I'll show you. I'll show you. Come and see. That's another one of those really, really deep statements. Three words. And it's, and it's got two parts to it. See, the first part is come. When Jesus turned to those disciples and said to them, come, he's issuing them an invitation. Remember, they were following him. And I've got this image of them kind of like hiding behind the bushes, right? It's like, maybe he won't see us following him. Maybe we can just see where he's going to. He wasn't having any of that. He turned around to them and he said, come. He initiated the contact. He initiated the relationship. He asked them the question. He told them to come. He told them to follow him. He gave them that invitation. And that invitation is huge. So how many of y'all in here are, are introverts? Okay, now you know that by raising your hand, you just prove that you're not an introvert. <laughs> okay. So I, I'm also an introvert. I did raise my hand. So, but but I'm, a, I'm an introvert. And, and so you'll definitely relate to this. But I think most of us here can relate to this idea. Like, let's say, have you ever been to a, a group a gathering, right? Any kind of gathering. Let's say maybe hypothetically a gathering of, of church people in the church house for church. You've never been there before. You don't know anybody there. You walk in. It could be the nicest group of people. It could be the most open group of people in the whole world. But you're going to feel like you're on the outside looking in. You're going to feel like you don't belong. Until you get the invitation. Until someone comes and shakes your hand, maybe gives you a hug, and says, come on in. The invitation is huge. But Jesus doesn't leave it at the invitation. He doesn't just say come. He also says come and see. Because he knows that those disciples are going to need to see who he is. They're going to need to understand. They're going to need to experience it for themselves. Or that invitation is just going to fall by the wayside. It's just going to be meaningless. Now, he, Jesus, he could have tried. He could have tried to, you know, because he knew that they, were, that they were wanting to understand who he was, right? So he could have just explained to them. He could have sat them down and said, okay, yeah, I'm the second person of the Holy Trinity. I've come to save your souls. You know, he could have given them all of the scriptures that pointed towards who he was and why he was here. But he didn't do any of that. He just said, come and see. Tag along. Experience the feedings. Hear the sermons. See, participate in the miracles. And Andrew obviously saw, right? He saw enough to stay with him. Saw enough to stay there with him. He experienced. Now, at first, it may have been just kind of like, well, this guy, he, he's got this kind of peace around him. He's got this kind of joy around him. He's got this something that I, that I want to follow. But after a while, they experienced the feedings. They, they saw the miracles. They participated in the miracles, the raising from the dead. They saw all this kind of stuff. I mean, who wouldn't want to stay with Jesus? In the midst of all that, who wouldn't want to be with Jesus? Or to kind of flip it around for us, why do we stay with Jesus? Why do we stay with Jesus? We don't have to. No one's making us. I mean, y'all are here. You don't have to be here. 
right? There's a lot of folks who may still be in bed, cuddled up all nice and cozy in the blankets. Maybe fixing the queso for the football game later on. You don't have to be here. But you are. So why is that? Why are you here? What have you seen in Jesus that makes you stay? That makes you get up on a Sunday morning when so many other people are just recovering from the week that they just had? And what brings you here? What brings you to him? For some of us, maybe our parents brought us here. But what is it? It, it may be habit. You know, maybe that's just the way you were raised. You just do this on Sunday mornings. For, for, for others, maybe it was some kind of monumental experience that you had that you, you saw and, and, and lived to Jesus. And so you've got to keep coming back. But why? Why? Have you stayed? And it's not just a rhetorical question. I want to give y'all a few seconds to actually reflect on that. Why? Why are you here? Whatever it was for Andrew, he stayed. But here's the key. He didn't just stay. Because pretty much the first thing he did was go. It's like he met Jesus. Jesus said, come and see. He came, he saw, he stayed. But then immediately he goes to find his brother Simon. And he says to Simon, I found the Messiah. And he brings Simon to him. Jesus renames him Peter. And, you know, the rest of that story is history, right? And it wasn't just Andrew. As you heard in the children's sermon, Philip, Jesus finds Philip. He says to him pretty much the same thing he said to Andrew, follow me. And he does and he sees and he stays. But then what does he do? He goes and finds his buddy Nathaniel. And he says to Nathaniel, we found the Messiah. It's awesome. And Nathaniel says, nothing good can come out of Nazareth. So what does he do? Does he argue with him? Does he, does he give him proof text as to why Jesus is really the son of God? No. What does he say? Come and see. Can y'all say that with me? Come and see. Come and see says, come and see. That's what he does. Come and see. And so Nathaniel does, and he comes, and he sees, and he stays. All of us, every person in this room is like Andrew, is like Peter, is like Philip is like Nathaniel. Every single one of us has received the invitation. Every one of us has heard someone say to us, come and see. Now, for some of y'all, it may be your parents. For me, it was Kirsten. She didn't put it in exactly those words. And it involved a little bit of trickery. For her, it was a friend, a, a co-worker. But every one of us has received that invitation. Come and see. And we have come and we have seen. We have seen what Jesus has done in our lives. We've seen what Jesus has done in the lives of the people around us. And in seeing, we've, we've found the answer. We found that thing that we were looking for. We found that purpose. We found that meaning. We found our identity as beloved children of God. And so we stayed. 
So we have stayed. But that's not the end of our story. Just like that wasn't the end of Andrew's story or Philip's story, that's not the end of our story. We don't just stay. Just like Andrew, just like Philip, we also go. Because the fact is, there's a lot of folks. Some of those folks who slept in today, those, there's a lot of folks outside of these walls who are looking for the exact same thing that we've been looking for. They may not even know that they're looking, but they are. We all are. They're looking for that thing that we have found, and so our job is to share with them what we have found, not through arguments, not through coercion, not through fear. They get plenty of that on the evening news and Facebook. But by simply saying to them, as Jesus did to Andrew, come and see. Come and see the difference that Jesus has made in our lives. Inviting them into our lives and saying, look and see. See what Jesus has done for me. He can do the same thing for you. Now, this may be mind-blowing for y'all. It certainly was for me when I thought about it. Christmas is a little over a month away. Can you believe that? Yeah, me either. It's nuts. It's just a little over a month away. And, and when you think about it, Christmas is the ultimate example of this principle of come and see, right? God, the creator of everything that is, sent his son to earth saying, come and see. Come and see what I look like. Come and see what love really looks like. Come and see what the life that you were created to live really looks like. Come and see. So what I'd like for us to do over the next month, month plus, is to do just that. Is to, is to invite some folks to come and see. Invites folks who, who are looking desperately for something that they don't yet have. Invite them into our lives. Invite them to come and see. And so before we leave today, I just want to make one more invitation to y'all, and that is to just take a few seconds here. Think of who your Andrew might be who your Nathaniel might be. Who are some folks in your life to whom you need to say, come and see? Would you join me in prayer? Almighty and loving God, you loved us into existence. You continued to love us even when we went our own way. You loved us so much that you sent your son as an expression of yourself, as an expression of your love, to show us how to share that love with those around us. You told us to come and see, Lord, and we have. Help us now to go out and ask others to come and see. Come and see your glory. Come and see your goodness. Come and see the life that you have waiting for them. We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. I'm going to invite anyone who wants to come and see what it looks like to be a part of this family of faith to come up and, and join me up here and uh, become members while we're singing this last song. I'd like to invite you to stand as we talk about and sing about the actual reason why we come and see and we're going to sing the great I am.
So receive this benediction, this good word. And the good word for today is several words. Come, see, stay, and go. May you do just that. May you go from this place having seen, having come, to, to share what you have experienced. May, may folks see God at work in you. May folks experience Jesus in your words and in your actions so that they say to themselves, I got to get me some of that. May the love of God, the peace of Jesus Christ, and the joy and communion of the Holy Spirit be yours today and tomorrow and forevermore. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. We're going to sing one last chorus as we dismiss today. Let's sing it together. <laughs>